I checked the website 538 to find out my election fate. Nate Silver, you will know the score, even though I was wrong before. So look, guys, uh, our current model shows that Trump has less than a one in six chance of winning, about the same odds as the number one coming up when you roll a die. So for example, <laughs> ha, one. Oh. <laughs> This weekend's SNL imagined how political forecaster Nate Silver is trying to figure out the possible outcomes of the election for 2020. And we're going to just find out from the real Nate Silver. We're just going to ask him. Please welcome 538's Nate Silver. Hey, Nate. Welcome to The View. Joy, the question's yours. <laughs> okay, so Nate, we're all on the edge of our seats at this point, and uh, there's a lot of anxiety out there, and very, and, uh, to be frank, fear and trepidation that he could win. Um, what is the data telling you as we look ahead to tomorrow night, and, and what are the odds that we will have any answers by then? So I have this pair of playing cards here, and they represent, no, I'm just kidding. Um, look, we <laughs> may or may not know all that much by tomorrow. Because there are kind of two tiers of states. There are states in the South, like Georgia and Texas and Florida, North Carolina, Arizona, those five. They are all very close. They are all kind of toss-ups, maybe lean Biden in a couple of cases. They do count their votes pretty quickly. So we might know about those five states by midnight, by one in the morning. Um, if Biden is able to break through and win one of those states, certainly if he wins two or more of those states, then he'll probably be in pretty good shape. What we probably won't know about tomorrow night right. is the upper Midwest and the Rust Belt. So Pennsylvania, um, a lot of ballots will not be counted until potentially Wednesday morning. Michigan is going to be likely a bit slow to count its ballots. Wisconsin might be a bit faster, but not as fast as in the South. So it's kind of like Biden has two ways to win. Um, he can either kind of pick off a southern state, a Sun Belt state, or he can kind of win back the blue wall states. Um, the Sun Belt will know about tomorrow. The blue wall will take longer. Nate, I think many Americans, including me, have PTSD after what went down in 2016 when polls showed that Hillary Clinton was going to win. You had her at 71.4 percent that day. What would you say to skeptics like me who this year are not trusting the polls, don't want to see polls, don't want to believe polls, don't want anybody to take it for granted? So can you explain to me why I shouldn't be skeptical of the polls this time around? Well, you should be skeptical. Um, not because there's anything wrong Good. with the polls, but because polls is a tough business, right? Um, you know, in 2016, for example, Clinton, despite her leaving the polls, had a 29% chance or 30% chance of losing. Um, Joe Biden's lead's a little bit larger. He's ahead by wider marches in the Midwest in particular. He has more of these southern states in play. Um, but still, the kind of the draw comes up to Trump about 10% of the time. Um, we've all learned in the period of COVID to understand risk. We worry about 1% risks, for example, of, of dying if you catch COVID if you're a certain age. So certainly a 10% risk is something which you have to take seriously. Um, with that said, we want people to think in terms of a spectrum of possibilities. Um, if you have a five-point polling lead in Pennsylvania, which is what um, Biden has, it's a little bit safer than two or three points. Um, it's, perf it's not perfectly safe by any means at all. So we want to, the whole point of our odds is to say, you look at these polls and what do they actually mean, because they are wrong sometimes, and we're telling you, like a weather forecast, how often they might be wrong. Nate, uh, both candidates seem to really be focused on Pennsylvania. And you've said that without Pennsylvania, um, Biden becomes an underdog. Why is that state so pivotal? And what other states are you really paying close attention to at this point? Pennsylvania is the single most important state. Um, if you kind of line all the states up based on how they're polling, other factors, um, some states like Wisconsin and Michigan have strongly shifted back toward Biden this year, maybe because of the COVID pandemic, frankly, is really bad in Wisconsin right now. Then there are states, like I mentioned earlier, like Florida and Arizona that maybe lean Biden, but they're very close, traditionally GOP states. Right in between is Pennsylvania. I'm not sure whether it's, you know, fracking or something, or it's always been a swing state, but it's not, it's not quite as in the clear for Biden as Michigan, for example. And so it's kind of like the dominoes fall in one direction based on Pennsylvania. Um, if Biden wins Pennsylvania, he probably then also wins Wisconsin and Michigan, and then he's back to being elected the next president. 
If he loses Pennsylvania, then all of a sudden, there are no sure things for Biden. He has a lot of other um, options. Um, but do you want to rely on Florida as a Democrat? You don't want to have to rely on it. So it becomes more of a contingency if you, if you were to lose Pennsylvania. Nate, more than 93 million Americans have already voted. What can we glean from the record early voting turnout so far? These are unseen numbers. Yeah, I think one wants to be pretty careful because sometimes a person who will vote early will therefore not be able to vote twice on Election Day. Um, but we do know that, number one, turnout is likely to be very high. In fact, in several states, like Texas, you already have more turnout than you had in the entirety of 2016. Um, we also know the party registration of people who are turning out, and so far they are mostly Democratic, um, mostly through mail votes, I should say. That does not tell us anything we didn't know from the polls. Polls also say, hey, look, um, Biden's going to do really well with early voters and mail voters, and then Trump will catch up on Election Day, and it might become a lot closer. Um, but, you know, Democrats are going to turn their vote out in all probability, so it's a question of can the GOP match. If they can, then Trump has some winning chances, 10 percent. If they can't, then... Um, then maybe you could have Biden win by a bigger margin than polls show. Keep in mind, every now and then you do get a, a era that runs in the Democrat direction in the polls. So 2012 was pretty close in the polls, but Obama won by a rather solid margin in the end. So if you do get the Democratic base turning out in big numbers, including minorities, including women, including everybody, younger voters and older voters, then, then you can have a big Democratic year.